a big mess by sending you twice of the left hand side, but none of the right hand side. So I made it up by sending me sending you two uh, correction email. One is to tell you that you should delete half of the first half, uh, part one of the two of the first half and the, insert the, the part on the right hand side. And if you receive my email, uh, you will see the corrected, uh, uh, you can print out the, the attachment which has the corrected uh, version of it. <clears throat> and uh, I also send you a correction uh, notice because uh, in the song that uh, the Doris song, Doris Day song, I forgot to attach the YouTube link. So uh, if you didn't see my email or uh, line group uh, post, uh, you should go see so that you will know where that that song on YouTube is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Somehow, today uh, Maybe I should uh, take a cough drop. Uh, I got one prepared for myself. Okay. Okay. Uh, we start on the left hand side. Maybe I should uh, put it back. It's not good to be having a cough drop in my mouth while I talk. We'll see what happens. Just like. Donald Trump said, we shall see what happens, okay? Uh, the first word is dire strait. It is a very often used phrase, which means a, a terribly bad situation. We could say that a person is in a dire strait. Most often it would be that uh, financially uh, he or she is in a difficult situation. And uh, last time we probably were talking about the country that was in dire strait. Uh, many countries right now are in dire strait because uh, of coronavirus. So just remember dire strait is a phrase that is often used to describe a very serious, uh, difficult situation you are in. <clears throat> the next word is propaganda. Uh, which is um, but is a, most often a political instead of a co commercial one. Commercially, you could uh, do advertisement or commercials or things like that to promote your product. But, uh, you know, a government does not have a product or does not have a reputation to defend and, and unless they really do some work on it. In the past, the people do not care too much about the a country or a government's image too much, but then they realize that uh, they should and they're doing a lot actually. Nowadays, many countries are doing a whole lot of propaganda, which means they're trying to promote the information that are uh, that is favorable to to them, or that is uh, even fake, or they they make up uh, misinformation so that people would have a good impression. So it's doing a PR. P PR means uh, public relations, public relationship. So many companies have a PR part of the company that. They spend a lot of time and effort doing promotion of their product, their image, their reputation. Uh, for example, some crisis happened. For example, somebody took a medicine and died. And immediately, that is very bad press. And Johnson and Johnson had this kind of crisis once when they're, I think, Tylenol or something, a, a, a medicine that they, they manufactured uh, 
headband thing happened to it. It turns out it's not their fault. It's somebody secretly went to the stores and put something of a poison or something in this medication so that the the next customer who had no idea took that medicine and got sick or even died. So that is very bad for a company's image. But Johnson and Johnson came out of it with flying color, how we say, with flying color. 就是说, with flying colors. Okay, 就是说, uh, 他能够 get through this PR crisis and came through it with flying colors. This is an example. However, when it comes to, I'm sorry, it should be written on the second line, but that's okay. I'm just trying to make notes so that after the class, I would be able to collect all the new notes and put <clears throat> on the uh, slide for next week. And uh, politically, you, you're not a commercial enterprise, you're not a business, but your image is still very important, uh, both internally and externally. You want other people in other countries to have a good impression of your country for especially uh, in the past when we have Taiwan and mainland, we each compete on the international stage trying to promote our image so that we would have say more votes on the uh, United Nations ballots or things like that. And on the other hand, I would say for a government, it's more in, important to do propaganda in internally because other countries are even less important than your own people. If your own people did not have a good view of the government, you're, you're pretty much in dire strait. So a government would do a lot of propaganda. They would say, oh, our economy is so good. For example, Donald Trump, he would say things almost 10 times a day that are totally baseless and uh, for propaganda. It's not true, but he would say that just to make people feel happy about him. Uh, he would say, oh, here's your most popular uh, president, but he's not, but he keep on saying that. That's just a simple propaganda, but uh, there's a propaganda machine that is not so simple. The government would uh, put a lot of money and effort trying to promote their image or trying to sell their policy or to convince people that they are good, they are better. Or the other party who's in the opposition, huh? opposition just a fan down, huh? Here we can have uh, opposition, huh? They also want to promote their image and get their messages through, so they would have their propaganda machine. Huh? If it's a huge effort to do something, we call it a machine. I remember uh, there was a time when Beyond Borg was a very good tennis player. That was some time ago. And he was on the cover of uh, Time magazine, which the caption says uh, the some kind of tennis machine, maybe the, the best uh, tennis machine in the world. And many people did not did not like that word because they think only human can play tennis so well. You cannot use the word machine to describe beyond Borg. Okay, so propaganda is often a machine. Huh? When you see the word machine, it could mean that a lot of effort and money and time were devoted to promote something, to do something. It's called a machine. Of course, machine is Gichi, how we use machine to express Gichi is the most common way. And it's very 
common and we all know it, but when it's used in a different way, it can mean a great effort or mechanism devoted to do something. Uh, the next one is a subcontinent. It's just one word that you should remember because when any people in the whole world mention subcontinent, they mean either India or Pakistan or the peninsula where they are situated on. So India being bigger, most of the time when you say subcontinent, you mean India, but it also includes Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Bangladesh, yeah, I think that's the word, Bangladesh. And in the larger sense, you can also include Afghanistan because it was uh, closer to uh, Pakistan. But most often it's India that you're talking about. Uh, for good means uh, forever. So I've settled this matter for good. Uh, that's a very simple and easy way to say uh, forever. And the word malaria is nye qi, huh? uh, it is a kind of a tropical disease that is contagious. It is not passed along by contact or by air, by breathing, but it is uh, passed along by a certain uh, kind of mosquito that uh, sucked uh, the, when it, stings you, it would release a little bit of its saliva. I don't know if that's called saliva. Some kind of juice is released from the mosquito to the human being when the mosquito landed on the person to suck the blood. And by that process, this disease, malaria, is passed on from person to person. So that's one kind of contagious disease, and there are many kinds. And it seems to me that Donald Trump did not know what these kinds of con contagion pathway are. And he, he says, oh, I learned a lot, which means he knew nothing about it before. Well, even now, okay. But uh, malaria is uh, a disease that kills millions of people, especially in Africa. That's why people like Bill Gates devoted a lot, a great portion of his Gates Foundation resources to the curing of uh, or prevention or of malaria. That would include uh, uh, spraying uh, insecticide. Okay, so it could be an uh, insecticide, insect, insecticide. Ah, this side is the so insecticide is the And uh, like uh, uh, mosquito nets, and uh, maybe draining the swamps, and uh, what else? Oh, putting screens on the window. And uh, vaccination, yeah, you have vaccination. Do you? Do you? I guess so. Yeah, you have preventive uh, medication. Actually, every time you go to a country where there could, you have, you're in danger of having uh, contract uh, contracting malaria. Uh, the doctor would tell you to bring or to start taking some medication like uh, quinine or malarone or um, doxycycline. There are all kinds of medication you can take to prevent uh, malaria. But the next word is artist rendering or rendition. Uh, rendering is from the word, the verb render. Uh, to make something or to cause something to happen is to render. So an artist rendering is an artist created something to show something that you cannot take a picture of. Either it's too far away or it's too tiny or too, uh, it's just not there yet. So you find an artist who would do a sketch to 
for people to understand what you mean by the thing. Uh, and the rendering and rendition are the same thing. They are just the a noun used to, to mean uh, rendering, the act of rendering. <clears throat> uh, so uh, last time I talked about an art, an apartment that was not built or any building that was not built in order to promote the sale of uh, units in this building, they would first get an artist to do a picture of this future building so that people who, who wanted to buy something, they could have an Im image to tell them what is, it looks like. Or when it's a very tiny, like a coronavirus, or if it's very far away, like the Mars, uh, the pl planet Mars, or any other planets or stars, where you don't have a picture of it, you could get an artist to render a picture for people to see. And the next one is, uh, I just want to go through very quickly, it's called the tornado, and it's Nicknames are Twister, Whirlwind, or Cyclo. I remember there was a lady who used to tell me that every time he, she left the dog at home by the dog itself, uh, when she goes home, uh, the house looks like it was hit by a cyclone. Yeah, that was the first time I heard the word cyclone. That was decades and maybe half a century ago. Okay, that's how old I am. A uh, funnel cloud is the cloud, when you see a tornado, it has this twisting wind and it looks like a funnel, which is a lodo. Huh? Uh, lodo is what we use in the kitchen to pour oil, transfer oil from a big container to a smaller jar and things like that. Uh, then we have these three simple words, botany, zoology, and mineralogy. Last time I spelled mineralogy with that A, uh, having an O instead. And the dictionary says uh, I was not wrong by doing that, but the more common and the correct way to spell it is with an A. That's why I put a red A here so that you will remember that I was partially wrong last time. Uh, these are the study of these sciences, each has a name. And many other sciences would be like uh, mineralogy, having something called the logi at the end. And these are all uh, part of the words from Greek language. When I was in uh, Greece, we were in the tour bus for a long stretch of time and the tour guide would think of a game for us to play and she would pass the microphone to each of us and we we are required to name one english word that originated in greek language uh, so we just went through like 40 or 50 words you can easily pick a word in english language that has a Greek origin because uh, the entire Western European civilization came from Greece. Many, many words came from Greek language. Uh, where was I? Okay, I was talking about this lachi, huh? for example, geology. Uh, that's one word, geography, so it's easy to find words that ends in L-O-G-Y or in phi, graph phi. Uh -huh. Those are the ending part that means it is a study of something. Uh, then I want to talk about the word satellite just briefly. It means weixing. Uh, when we say weixing, we think about zhenzao weixing. However, uh, in astronomy, a satellite may be a, not an artificial man-made satellite. It could be the moon. The moon is a satellite of the Earth. Uh, so there are many satellites in the solar system that are 
uh, natural, natural satellite instead of uh, artificial. But when people make satellite, they make it to be a, a secular a satellite also means this thing has to orbit around something, a, a heavenly body. Huh? If, you, if you just make something man-made and throw it away, it may go all the way to the end of the solar system, but that's not a satellite. A satellite has to circle around something, and it's usually around the Earth. Huh? We have, for example, GPS satellite uh, that, it, that, <laughs> that I was saying uh, that, that is, but the, there are a whole lot of GPS satellites, and there are weather satellites, and uh, all kinds of satellites. Uh, uh, many uh, tech, tech companies wanted the Earth to be surrounded by hundreds and thousands of satellites, so it's much easier for them to sell their product. For example, uh, they want to cover the Earth with hundreds of mm, Wi-Fi satellites so that everyone in any corner of the Earth can get good Wi-Fi reception. Huh? So that's the word uh, satellite. Uh, the next word is uh, Hui Yi Lu. Huh? Hui Yi Lu is when it's very similar to autobiography. Autobiography comes from the word biography. Huh? These are some words I added after I sent you the list uh, on Monday. So you may want to add autobiography and biography. Biography, this bio is like we say, botany and zoology called biology. Uh, biology is a science, is talking about the So it includes 植物跟动物,这个叫做biology。这个bio就是生的意思。而biography呢,就是讲一个人的一生的事情,从生到死,多半是这样。所以我们叫做传记,这叫做biography。uh, when it comes to an autobiography, it is a biography about yourself. So the person who wrote the autobiography is the person himself. So autobiography. So what's the difference between autobiography and the memoir, which is also a bi biography by the person himself? Memoir is the more intimate and the a partial part of a person's life that he chose to write about. For example, uh, if it's a biography of, uh, say, Sun Zhongshan, then whoever wrote this biography, it's not an autobiography. Whoever wrote it would tell you about how he was born or even the background of his parents, and then uh, what he did all, these, all his life and what's the influence after he's dead. But uh, when it's an autobiography, uh, usually this person just write this book until the day he was writing it. Nothing uh, after that was in that book because he wrote it and he cannot predict what's going to happen in his future. But when he writes a memoir, he can cho choose a very narrow part of his life and dedicate the book on this incident. For example, uh, it could be about the uh, the Cuban crisis, if, if he's President Kennedy writing a memoir. He, instead of telling you about all his life, he could write about the Cuban um, crisis, a missile crisis. And if it's a person, for example, we were talking about uh, uh, Alan J. Lerner, uh, he was uh, in co co corroborating with uh, Frederick Lode to write, uh, was that My Fair Lady? Yeah, I think it's My Fair Lady and uh, others like uh, Camelot and so on and so forth. So Alan J. Lerner wrote a memoir. It's called uh, The Street Where I Live. If you were present in our 
past few classes, you will know that we sang the song, The Street Where You Live. So this uh, lyricist, uh, Alan J. Lerner, he wrote his memoir with the title, The Street Where I Live, which means Broadway. He spent a, a lot of time of his life, especially during the time when he wrote these musicals on the street called Broadway in New York City. So he used that as his um, title of his memoir. And this memoir is uh, uh, concerns with only three musicals in his life, which is My Fair Lady, Gigi, and the Camelot. So it's only within a few years, maybe less than five years, he wrote these three musicals with a partner, Frederick Lowe, and they were so successful that he thought, wow, that is a very exciting moment in my life. And I would like to write down what happened during those few years so that people who liked my musicals, especially one of these three musicals, would love to buy this book to get some inside information. And I, when I was in Taiwan, uh, I went to make Guaxin Wen Chu, huh? U.S. Information Service, I guess. They have a library of many American books. That's their part of their propaganda. And I borrowed the book called The Street Where I Live. And I read his book. That's why I knew quite a lot about these uh, uh, things that are quite personal to his to this person. Uh, when people write an autobiography, it, uh, they, they try to be objective. They don't want to be just promoting themselves all the time. So it's less intimate and less personal. It's more about giving you the information, but not his personal feeling inside. But when they write a memoir, they would like to tell you at that time he was uh, fighting a certain disease or his family was having turmoil and so on and so forth. So a memoir is more intimate and more emotional and uh, uh, dedicated to a small part of this person's life. Uh, these are the differences between a memoir and an autobiography. And uh, the next word, I had the letter A uh, highlighted in red because it was just about the last word I wrote during that class last week. And I knew it was wrong. So, but I couldn't come up with that word, uh, letter A. So immediately I got, I checked and I found it and put it in. So I put it in here, not because I want to tell you more about it, but to make you correct the error uh, by adding an A there, okay? The next one is called the subtitle. Uh, it is when you watch a foreign movie, you would see subtitles on the screen so you would understand what it's all about. Uh, usually when you watch a movie in Chinese or in English, you do not need any subtitles even though sometimes they do have subtitles in Chinese or in English to help you. But mostly uh, when you say a movie has subtitle, it means it's a foreign language movie and you could not understand it without subtitles. Uh, so However, nowadays you see lots of uh, YouTube uh, uh, videos and uh, many of them have closed caption. Many of the YouTube uh, videos, you open it and you could see this, watch this movie going on and on. And on the lower right corner, uh, you can see some icons. One is uh, the, the one on the very right hand side. It's a, a thing that when you click, it makes the movie uh, larger or smaller. Huh? So you could uh, 
changes between a larger screen or a smaller screen. When it's smaller, you can you can work on the screen with other things on it. But when you just want to watch this movie, you want it to cover the entire screen. So it's a better, bigger image for you to watch. But sometimes you will you want to click it back and forth. So there is that icon for you to change. And the next to that, there are uh, there is a, there may be other icons, but every time it, it has it, it shows different ones, but most of the time it will show a little icon that says CC, which means closed caption. So if you see something and you couldn't hear it well, uh, or you don't understand it well, or if you are uh, at the airport when they muted the screen, so you couldn't hear what this, the news is all about, or when you're, uh, you're deaf, then even though the screen is uh, showing uh, what it was talking about, you couldn't hear it. Uh, at this time, you would be able to understand what's showing up in that movie by clicking on the CC. So once you closed, uh, clicked on the CC at the lower right hand of the YouTube screen or many other video on the internet, you will be able to choose closed caption. With, uh, a caption means uh, usually in the old days, it means the line of words explaining about what this picture, a photo is. So you see a photo and you wonder what that is, where it was and what, what time it was taken and what it was about. Then you put a caption or someone else put a caption underneath so you would be able to tell all you want to know about this picture and when it comes to video then you have uh, captions continuously if it's a movie it goes on and on and the caption would change as the people speak different words and what does close means close means that uh, your caption can come up or go away by by your action. You can click on this CC to make it happen, or you click it again to make it disappear. So closed caption means the caption is there, but not always. So you, some per person can click and uh, see it, but the people who don't need it just don't see it. It's not written on the screen. It is on a different thing that projects to the screen so that you see it's on the screen, but it's not actually written on the movie itself. That's called the closed caption. So we have all these different words, huh? Uh, subtitles is uh, mostly in the foreign language. Uh, when you cannot understand this language, uh, they provide you with subtitles. While closed caption, is not just the dialogue. Sometimes it, you could see a movie with a caption, caption that put things into a parenthesis. It could say gentle music playing or a big explosion or whatever. Those are sounds, but not in the dialogue. You can hear the sound, but it's not written in words. So these are closed caption would also include uh, explanation of these sounds that if you are deaf, you could not hear. Or if you are watching a airport TV, you could not hear. That's called closed caption. And open captions means uh, uh, it cannot be turned off when the caption is on the movie itself, then it's called the open caption because no matter how hard you try, you cannot get rid of it. Okay, so these are things we probably came across but never look into it to see what the difference means. Okay, so on this screen, we finished the left hand side and we're going to the right hand side that starts with dogma. Dogma is 教条, 
most often or originally it, uh, it is about Catholic church. They have dogma. They put down all these rules that are non-negotiable. You have to follow these rules no matter you like it or not. For example, they say the sun goes, uh, the, 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 the sun goes around the earth. Even though you may have doubt, you cannot doubt them because that is a dogma. And uh, it's held unquest here, huh? held unquestioningly. 就是你不能问他到底对不对, huh? As a Catholic believer, you are not allowed to question whether this dogma is right or not, whether you want to obey it or not, uh, because it is unquestioningly held and with undefended certainty. 就是说, these dogmas are so certain, they don't even defend for it. You, even though they, they may feel, hmm, maybe that was wrong, but they never tell you that you should think about whether it's right or wrong. They just say, this is the rule. You have to believe it. That is called a dogma. So when we think about a philosophy or a, a religion, uh, dogma is a word that means the part that is non-negotiable and very strictly held. Uh, so in the whole world with so many religion and so many uh, philosophy, uh, Catholicism is the one that's famous for its dogma, which means they have all these beliefs that people must unquestioningly obey and they did not even have to defend it. So these are called dogma. Uh, yeah, so when you talk about dogma, the first thing you think of is Catholicism. Catholicism, uh, but it can also be uh, some kind of philosophy or a philosopher's position, those that they think is just truth forever. So you, if you discuss it, uh, you, sh you should not discuss it because they held it to be truth forever. Of course, uh, as people, the civilization moves forward, things do change because there's a lot of scientific knowledge now that people have easy access to that make them doubt their religious dogma. Uh, uh, so I'm sure uh, Catholics no longer hold uh, the the uh, solar system as a heresy because it's been proven again and again uh, it is true huh so people in the beginning when they uh, decided to advocate that the earth goes around the sun they had to pay a lot for that M many paid their life for it or they have to sacrifice their integrity they have to agree uh, that the dogma is true and I was wrong, huh? but uh, they have to, ch the, 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 the Catholic church eventually had to revise this, their dogma, many of them. Huh? This word dogma is uh, often used uh, pejoratively, which means uh, in a negative light, the uh, pejorative is that it is not the positive connotation, is that when you the negative connotation. And the dogma is a similar word. When you say dogma, it has a pejorative sense. Huh? Uh, 
so a lot of the aggressive political interests or authority that 就是说一些 dictatorship 哈，一些专制的国家里，他就会有一些规矩是别人。必须要服从的，所以外面的人看起来就觉得这是他们的 dogma， 而不是说他的 policy 或者是说他的 principle， 而是说他是一个 dogma， 而有一种轻视他的意思。哈，呃 ，it it also means that people who believe in in such a strong Way that they refuse to discuss this matter rationally. 哈，就是信这个教的人呢，他拒不不愿意 discuss rationally. 哈，这个 rationally 就是由用理性来讨论哈。所以说，一个宗教或者是哲学，它的一些呃教条或者说法是是。变成 dogma 的话，就是说别人认为他们不愿意 openly discuss it rationally. 哈、huh? ，this attitude is na、uh, this attitude is named as a dogmatic one or as dogmatism. 这个就是说 dogma 这个字是一个教条这个名词 ，and to become an adjective, you would say dogmatic. And to become a Zhuyi, you would say dogmatism. So these are related words、uh, when you learn the word dogma. And now we talk about martyr, martyrdom, and canonization is the first、uh, topic I wanted to cut, discuss in detail today.、Uh, martyr is a word about to die for a cause. And for a long time, this word was used to describe people who died for Catholic Church. Or at that time, it may or may not be called the Catholic Church. It's just a Christian church, but it's very old, before three three thirteen. Ha, before the year three thirteen, people who are Christians.、Uh, When there was no Catholicism existing, it's just called the Christians. Huh?、Uh, Christians are were outlawed since、uh, since Peter, when Peter and Paul were executed in Rome because they were preaching Christianity, and they were executed. So they were one of the earliest Christian martyrs.、Uh, you may say Jesus Christ was the very first. Christian martyr, but when he was alive, there is no such word as Christianity.、Uh, so he was, he died for his belief. But、uh, to count the martyrs, you have to start with Peter or Paul or many other common people. We've seen many、uh, movies in very early. Uh, uh, Christendom.、Uh, one of them is、uh, about Pompeii, the the eruption of the Vesuvius volcano in Pompeii. We know now. Now, if you go to you go to Italy and visit the the ruins of Pompeii, it's because the ex the explosion or in, eruption. Well,、oh, let me write something down. Huh. You can say eruption.、Uh, that's more about、uh, a volcano, huh? Volcano.、Uh, if you say explosion, that is not exclusively about volcano. It can be a bomb or a cannon shell or or a grenade, things like that. It can explode, but we say eruption. Because it is a volcano, ha, 火山才能够 erupt, ha, 火山爆发而这个爆炸是 explosion, ha. Uh, a movie, uh, I, I think it's probably called Pompeii, but, uh, we would call it in Chinese, 古城末日记 ha. It's about the ex 
uh, inter uh, eruption of Pompeii, uh, uh, eruption of Vesuvius. Ha, this is the volcano name. It's called Vesuvius. Ha, Vesuvius volcano. Ha, so this V is a big letter. 因为它是这个山的名字。If you go to Napoli, 哈、uh, ，或者英文叫做 Naples， 就是那不里哈。Uh, or you go to Sorrento, 呃、uh, ，they are both by the sea. And you look back to the land, you can see Mount Vesuvius that ex that ex erupt many many times. And one of the times in human history was in seventy nine. A.D. Huh? On that、uh, in that year, it, ex,、uh, <laughs> it erupted and buried the whole town of Pompeii under lava. Huh? We have Pompeii. Pompeii. That's the name of the city, which is also the name of one of the generals. Huh? Who? Maybe it's、uh, spelled、uh, with a.、Uh, Why? Let me see because the、uh, auto correction says I was wrong. Huh? Okay. So Pompeii is the name of the town, and、uh, Pompeii is also the name of the person. I think that was spelled P O M P E I, and he was one of the first triumvirate. Huh? Triumvirate. Right. I hope it's right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the first triumvirate, we have Chinese called the 前三雄哈 and then there are the second triumvirate, we have called the 后三雄就是在呃可以说是 the time around Jesus' time, um, before he was born, there. Actually, it's before Jesus was born. We have for 前三雄后三雄 the the first、uh, triumvirate would be Pompey, Crassus, and the Caesar. 呃，就是我们叫做邦贝、克拉西跟 Caesar 叫什么？凯撒哈。那 the second triumvirate 我们叫做后三雄。That would be、uh, Anthony, 就是安东尼，就是 Cleopatra 的呃、uh, boyfriend 哈，安东尼呃、uh, Lepidus and、uh, to、oh, Octavius 啊，我们叫做安东尼乌大维哈 ，Octavius 叫做乌大维跟雷比达，他们三个是后三兄。These are the six. Extraordinary people during that time in the Roman Empire's big, the beginning of the Roman Empire. the The first three was when the Roman was a republic. However, Caesar, ha, 原来的文名字叫做凯撒，可是因为他用一个 C 来拼，所以后来英文就变成叫 Caesar。可是他翻译成中文还是叫凯撒。哈，呃 ，Caesar and the, Pompey and the Crassus, they were three of them during the Republic time. And after Caesar became the dictator、uh, and was assassinated, we talked about that last time. The the whole three of them just came out. These three people they fought against each other, trying to become the dictator after Caesar. So they are called the these、uh, whole three of them.、Uh, Uh, I was talking about this this movie. I think it's called the Gucheng Mo Ri Ji. It's about the eruption of、uh, the volcano, but it's about a few people in there, and those people were played by、um, Christine Kaufman, a very pretty young girl, and、uh, I don't know if Tony Curtis was in that movie. Anyway,、uh, Christine Kaufman was a.、Uh, A first-time actress, and she blazed onto the scene with that movie, which is about the persecution of Christians during that time under Roman Empire. Ah,、uh, uh, we know that、uh, the calendar started the CE or AD. Ah,、uh, CE, we call the Comma Era. Ah.、Huh? 
就是公园的意思。呃、uh, ，since I have this mic here, I could say C E or A D or B C 哈、uh, ，or B C E 哈、uh.。When it comes to the Western calendar, you have C E or A D, which means uh uh after uh Christ 哈、uh, come come Which is, the, which is the first year of the common era? 哈，这叫做公元或者西元第一年。And all the years before are called the BC, before Christ, or before common era. So this AD is about uh, uh, something dominant. 哈 ，dominant 就是我主，我的上帝。哈，就是 after 我主。或者是 before Christ, these are the, um, uh, how do you say that? <laughs> the the uh, abbreviation, huh? Um, to call the comma era. So uh, when Jesus was born, uh, it was probably three years. Before CE or before AD, however, due to some、uh, mistake in calculation, they decided that the cal calendar should start with our、uh, first year AD, which is probably the when Jesus was three or four years old. But that's a mistake that is never going to be corrected. So Jesus died probably when he was thirty-three years old. So after that, there is Christianity. After he died, and it became it it grew ex、uh, it grew exponentially, which means the 信这个教的人越来越多，非常的多 And the government was very concerned because people were getting together. 啊，那时候还没有所谓的。人民有集会结社的自由，哈。It this is written clearly in the in our Bill of Rights in the United States. Uh, after they had、uh, the Constitution of United States declared that all men are created equal, they think that we need to write a little more about our rights. So they. They meaning Madison, Hamilton, and people like that.、Uh, in about less than ten,、uh, about ten years after the Constitution was、uh, written, they put out the Bill of Rights, which contained many uh, uh, rights of the people, and predominantly among them was the right to gather to. Talk, speak, to express your opinion,、uh, to to do a lots of these things. That those are part of your right. You're you're free to do such things. And before that,、uh, in the world, there was no such thing、uh, except for in the literature.、Huh? Like people like Montesquieu and the,、uh, Rousseau in France, they were the people who. Started the, we call it the Enlightenment. Ha, called Enlightenment. Enlightenment. Ha, that is the first time. Well, the, you can say that's the first time. But if you look at、uh, in China, we have a Qing Chao 初年的王夫之 He started to talk about the freedoms that. Regular people should have, but uh, of course uh, his book was not、uh, learned by any Western people. In the Western world,、uh, this kind of idea after Renaissance was、um, the age of enlightenment, and that says people are human and they have their rights, unalienable rights. How we call the unalienable rights. 就是这是天给他的这个 rights, and you can not take it away. Whether you are the the pope of the church or you are the king or emperor, these are people's unalienable right. 
But this idea is new and uh, to be written in a constitution uh, in the United States, that was the first time. So this is the dawn of democracy. Huh? And uh, I was trying to tell you about the history of Christianity. In the year 79 AD, these people who are Christians, they were all uh, put to death. The way to put them to death was to herd them into a coliseum, which is a, just a dou shou chang, huh? They would have a huge theater with tens of thousands of seats, and they heard the Christians on the floor of the arena. Huh? This arena is an arena. We now say is a forum or something, huh? but this word comes from sand because on the arena, they put a lot of sand there so that when a lion killed a Christian, there's a lot of blood and that can be absorbed by the sand. So in the Colosseum, huh? boy, I got so many new things. Colosseum is a dou shou chang. In the dou shou chang, there is an arena. In the arena, these Christians are put in the chang's for the animals to eat. Huh? That's your life as a Christian in the early Roman Empire. Uh, so at that time, you are a mart martyr. Huh? We come back to the word martyr. Because once you say you are a Christian, you decided your life is thrown away as soon as they catch you. Because that is a, a, a big crime that you can be executed for. Huh? Uh, so a Christian could easily die just because they, uh, they were a Christian during that time. So they became a martyr because they die for their religious belief. That's where this word was used first. In the Western world, it means shi, but in the beginning, it's, it's about Christians who die, who expect to die. They are willingly uh, put their life on the line because of their religious belief. So they are called a martyr. However, as things went on, uh, of course, there were more and more martyrs, large group of martyrs who are still honored right now, especially in Western civilization. But in the year 313, Roman Empire decided to Maybe, I'm sorry, I have this set up because I need to take my medicine. Uh, I went to a dentist a few days ago. Gee, <laughs> I forgot where my medication is. So I do that afterwards. Okay, I set the alarm for nothing because I forgot where my medicine is. I went to the dentist and they had some surgery done and I had to take uh, amoxicillin three times a day. That's why I set the alarm, okay? So after the class, I'm going to take my amoxicillin, okay? So uh, after 313, it's no longer a crime to be a Christian. Uh, first and foremost, your Emperor Con Constantine, Jun Shi Da, Jun Shi Tan Ding Da Di, he converted to Christian. So it's no longer a crime. You, you're not to be executed if you are a Christian. And uh, later on, the, another emperor after Constantine declared Christianity to be the state religion, so it's no longer a crime. Nobody will be killed for that. So this word become uh, uh, no longer uh, in practice. Uh, there are no martyrs and no Christians are to be executed. That's a very strange thing, huh? Uh, I talked about Constantine last time, so I'm not going to repeat that, huh? Uh, however, in the word, Martyr on Wikipedia, there is this 
paragraph about Chinese martyrdom. So it makes me curious. It seems that Tong Menghui is the first entity in China to use the word Lie Shi to honor the people who in their party who died while trying to fight for independence under Qing dynasty. So I could do some kind of research in the future to find out if the word Lie Shi were used in any other way. I think it was, for example, Shi Ke Fa or people like that. Wen Tianxiang, did we call them Lie Shi? Anyway, according to Wikipedia, it was Tong Menghui that uses Lie Shi first. Uh, and then Guomindang uses very often to, to honor some of the people who died that for a cause of, of the party or the country, okay? Uh, those people who died fighting against Qing dynasty, especially uh, in the year Xinhai, huh, which we had both Xinhai Gemin and earlier in March, we had uh, Huang Hua Gang. Huh? These two, you know, uh, Sun Yat Sen uh, was the leader of our uh, independence movement, and he initiated 10 uh, such incidents like Xinhai Gemin or Huang Hua Gang, and the, the eight before them were in the years before, but they're less famous. So we could say that Tong Menghui invented the word Lie uh, Shi, starting with Huang Hua Gang, because they say that those were Lie Shi, and the Xinhai Gemin who died during that time was also a Lie Shi, and many people who died for the country after that were called Lie Shi. So it's possible if Wikipedia is correct that uh, Lie Shi was not very commonly used in China. Uh, then we talk about martyrdom in Christianity. I already talked to you about these. We have the Emperor Nero in uh, 54 to 68. He was the, the emperor during that time. And uh, Galerius, which was a, a much later one, from Nero to Gal Galarius. All these emperors, there were many. Yeah, they, they, they change sometimes in one year. Sometimes within a year, you would have uh, uh, four emperors because they kept being assassinated. Uh, there were many, many emperors, and I don't remember many of them. So from Nero, who was in... Uh, the movie Quo Vadis, he was one of the very bad emperors. He told people to set fire in Rome in order to get some kind of chaotic situation so he, people will be distracted about how bad an emperor he was. Uh, uh, I saw this movie when I was very, very, maybe in third grade. I don't remember much about it, but I watch it again on YouTube. You can watch that too. It is called, let me put it here. Quo Vadis. The movie is called the Quo Vadis. It's a Latin word which appeared in the Bible many, many times, especially uh, there was one time after Jesus died and uh, Peter went from Jerusalem to Rome. On the way, he met Jesus, huh? Jesus after he died. And so he asked Jesus, Quo vadi, where are you going? Uh, Jesus says, I'm going back to Jeruz Jerusalem to preach my my, uh, I would say, my philosophy, okay? And uh, Peter answered that uh, I am going to Rome. Uh, I'm, he was going to go into hiding because the 
he was being chased by people, but he saw that Jesus after death is still willing to go preach. He decided to go to Rome to preach. So this movie is called the Quo Vadis, huh? uh, with Deborah Carr and uh, who was that? Robert Taylor, I guess that's Robert Taylor, yeah. In the context of the church, almost certainly reason. Yeah. So in the beginning, being a Christian is, is a, a very dangerous thing to do because you, you are destined to be killed. You will be executed. So you are going to be a martyr. However, in the year uh, 313, during the reign of uh, Constantine, uh, Chris, Christianity was decriminalized, decriminalized. And under the next emperor, Theodosius, uh, it became the, the Christianity became a state religion. There's no martyrdom to speak of. So the goal for me to talk about is canonization. What do you mean by canonization? In the church, you have a church canon. In the old days, only church canons are canons. And in China, we had no church canons. Our canons, well, we'll talk about it later. Huh? So this is, a, in the Western culture, you have canon and you have canonization. And canonization means you are uh, revealed and approved as a saint and you are written in the book of canons so you are being canonized uh, you have to be dead huh? you cannot be living and be a saint you have to be dead first and they will initiate the church will initiate it first of all they would start a, a review or investigation locally in the village or in the area where people knew you. And uh, they would uh, investigate and see if you're worthy of public cult. Public coat. And after you are examined and proved to be worthy, then you, your name will be put into the canon and you will be a saint. Uh, you will be called a saint. So that is where the word canonization comes from. Uh, and the Catholic Church has canonized around 3,000 people. Uh, this process is very slow. It can take years, uh, if not decades or hundreds of years. Uh, some saint became saint after many hundreds of years. And the sticking point is you have to be proven to have presided over real miracles, uh, which right now under our scientific knowledge, it's probably not true, but I am not the person to, to make a judgment. So it gets, it gets more and more difficult to have people canonized because you have to find verified incident in which a thing miraculous happened, which is very hard. So uh, the, the sticking point is about uh, uh, recently about uh, Mother Teresa. Huh? But we'll talk about her momentarily. Uh, so the, there is, a, in the good old days, a saint was chosen by public official, but in the 10th century, there was Pope John 15. Huh? Uh, do you know how to read the Roman numbers? Uh, that is 10 and that is five. So that is, uh, you know, 15, huh? Pope John 15. Uh, he developed a, a 
canonization process. You have to meet all these processes. And since the 10th century, there's been a thousand years and this process has been changed again and again, modified in different ways. And most recent, recently was by John Paul, Pope John Paul II, is one of our very recent popes. Uh, in the year 1983, he made some changes and that's because of Mother Teresa. In the beginning, you have to be dead for 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever years, but Pope John Paul changed it to five years. So you can become a saint as early as five years because they want Mother Teresa to be one of the saints. Uh, it used to take decades or centuries to do the process. And first, before a person is canonized, uh, this person is uh, beatified. Uh, let, let's go through this. Uh, a local bishop, bishop, would investigate the candidate's life and death uh, and his writings. Uh, and then he would uh, send the uncovered information to Vatican. And uh, a fellow will be established to evaluate his life. Uh, if the panel approves, uh, this not canonized yet. This person can be beat, beat, beatific, beatified, or say, Bitification, huh? I don't know this word. Beatification, I've seen many times, but I don't know that it's called the Xuan Fu Li. But uh, apparently, it's not a very good translation, huh? Just a person being beatified locally as a saint and passed the test of having performed one miracle, huh? Uh, the next st step would be uh, throughout the entire church with two verified miracles, then he would be canonized as saints. Uh, this, this is a total process. Uh, so after beatification, which is a local process with one miracle, uh, uh, a miracle has to be posthumous. Posthumous miracle. Uh, most often it's cancer. And of course, we know people can have cancer and can be cured without medication or any other thing. So that is considered a miracle, but it's harder to find because many people who had cancer would not wait and not seek medical help. So they have to have, after their death, uh, there was somebody who prayed to this saint, uh, not, not yet saint, and the pr a miracle happened. Huh? It's after death, huh? post just after his, huh? posthumous just after he died. Okay, uh, but there is an escape clause. Uh, if you are a martyr, then you don't need to have a proven miracle. Uh, nowadays, how can you be a martyr? Well, there were some nuns, Christian nuns, in one of the Latin American countries. They were kidnapped by some outlaws and killed. So these people became saints right away after a review. They, they were canonized without uh, having performed a posthumous miracle because they are martyrs, which became very rare nowadays, okay? So we, have, we learned the word bitification, posthumous, and the martyr.
in order for someone who is beatified to be a saint locally to become really canonized, he has to be, have two posthumous uh, miracles proven. Okay, so nowadays, uh, if you want somebody to be canonized, I guess you have to have uh, cancer and not cure it by medication. That's a, and it's after this person died. Huh? So it's a quite difficult feat to achieve. And uh, as of now, there are only 3,000 such Catholic saints. And this is not Catholic. It's also religious and it's also Christian. This is the uh, uh, Anglican Church. Huh? Uh, at the same time as Martin Luther in Germany, uh, the Eng England had a religious uh, reformation, which is called, uh, well, it, it was uh, started by their king, King Henry VIII, Henry uh, Ba. He started because the Catholic Church would not give him uh, a divorce from his first wife. His first wife was his brother's widow, who was from Spain, Catherine of Aragon. Uh, she had the backing of the church and uh, the Spanish king. So she stands strong as someone not to be removed. And uh, the king desperately needed to remove this queen so that he could marry the second wife and the third and the fourth and six, seven, eight. No, 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 just six, six, huh? He married a six wife and the Catherine of Aragon being a really one person with a huge background behind her uh, was not easily moved. So King Henry VIII had to vote from the Catholic church with the entire churches behind him in his country. So they established their own religion, which is also a Christian religion, but it's called Anglican Church. Anglican, huh? Anglican is a group of Anglo-Saxon. Anglo-Saxon. Anglican Church. Uh, so Anglican Church is the huh? After that, there was a Church of Scotland, Church of Ireland, and so on and so forth. They become a very large uh, denomination. Huh? Denomination is a huh? denomination. So when you talk about the religion, it can have, it branches out into many denominations, like uh, Eastern Orthodox Christian Church, Catholic Church, Anglican Church, Lutheran Church, Reformed Church, many, many denominations. If you talk about money, you have Bai Yuan Chao, Shi Yuan, Yi Yuan, Hayu coins, $10, $2, $1, and so on and so forth. These are called the denomination of your money. Huh? And money can have denominations and a church can have denominations, okay? So here is a picture taken of uh, Westminster Abbey. Huh? Westminster Abbey is the biggest church under Anglican church. Uh, of course, it's in London. It's a beautiful church where all their kings and queens were buried and all the, the coronation took place, huh? Just a giant daily coronation, huh? Coronation, the corona is from Wang Guan So right now you all know this Latin word corona because of coronavirus, Guan Zhuang Bing Du. In the past, we know this word in coronation, huh? Before you can kind of purely on the Da Chu Hua, David Hua, the coronation of. Um, who was that? Napoleon, huh? Napoleon 
，你也许很多人都看过他跪在教皇面前。Well, actually, he did not do that. He grabbed grabbed the crown and put it on himself. He said, "No pope is great enough to put the crown on me." So that's Napoleon. But the picture you saw is the coronation of Josephine. Okay. Napoleon, the wife, just the Josephine, her Josephine, and she was crowned by that pope at that time in that picture. So this is the Church of England's、uh, mainstay、uh, church. It's called the Westminster Abbey. Huh? Anglican Church has their own system, and they have their pope.、Huh? The pope is Bishop of Canterbury. Huh? Just a bishop. Bishop. Bishop, oh, I go out of the place. Okay, Bishop is a Christian, huh? But he is Bishop of Canterbury, huh? Canterbury, huh?、Uh, all the history I learned were probably from movies, huh? When you talk about Canterbury,、uh, I could tell you about the movie Beckett.、Huh? Beckett is a movie. Who was the Bishop of Canterbury? Beckett. That was a time. Before Henry the Eighth, huh?、Uh, it was during Henry the Second. Henry the Second and Becket are two hua hua gongzi, huh? They were do, having wine and women all the time, and Becket is one of the prodigal sons, 就是非常的呃晃浪浪荡的一个人 So Henry the Second decided, ah,、oh, this. Bishop is always bugging me. I hate that. I'm going to put Becket as my bishop in Canterbury, and he will help me in everything because we are buddies. However, but Becket once who he became bishop of Canterbury, he became all totally reformed, and he was. Behind this king all the time, bugging him about all these things. So Becky was assassinated in the Church of Canterbury by Henry the Second, and I learned that from the movie. Okay,、uh, so we have all these, huh?、Uh, this part of the church of Westminster Abbey. These are the saints that they consider to be saint, and they put them. Through a certain process, which I did not go into, it could be similar or not similar to the canonization process as the、uh, Catholic Church. But these are their church, and you can see that there are Mother Elizabeth of Russia. Oh, okay, I have this one. Okay, Mother Elizabeth of Russia. She was a very good church person, probably a nun as a. No women could be a bishop or anything, so she was a a saint-like person in Russia during the Re- Russian Revolution. So the Bolsheviks, Bolsheviks 就是布尔塞维克哈，就是这个俄国的 Communist Party has two branches. The major party is called the Bolshevik, while the other minor pa- party. 叫做什么呢？波什维克、布尔塞维克、门塞维克哈，门门塞维克，我也不会拼了。It's shorter than this one. Ah,、uh, the Bolsheviks they became the the main party. So they they are you know they despise and they forbid any kind of religion under their government control. So they put this、uh, Mother Elizabeth. To death, so she was a martyr, and she automatically can become a saint, and she did become a saint. However, they they are not part of the Catholic Church. Ah,、huh? uh, in the year fifteen、um, something, is I think it's is San. Ah, fourteen fifty three. In that year, ah.、Uh, 东罗马帝国哈 ，Eastern or Byzantine， 啊，我们 call the Byzantine Byzantine Church in Eastern Europe， 呃、uh, ，was conquered by、uh, Turkish Empire. That's the year 
the Eastern Church, which is we call Orthodox, Orthodox, huh? Orthodox Church was part of the mainline a Catholic Church until 1504, I think. 1504, they became, they split up between the Dongzheng Jiao and Xizheng Jiao. So uh, when Turkish Empire conquered Istanbul and the, 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 the empire just died, they, they surrendered, their dead emperor lay there dead while, while the queen, Queen Zoe, huh, Z -O -E, Queen Zoe escaped back to her home, which is Russia. She was a Russian princess married to this Turkish emperor. But in the year 15, uh, 14, 4, 1453, that year he, uh, she went back to Russia. So Russia has their own Russian Orthodox church. And they think they were the, the Orthodox church in the East instead of the Greek Orthodox or Coptic church. These are many, many denominations of Eastern uh, Catholic church, which they don't call Catholic, Eastern Orthodox church. Huh? So this mother Elizabeth of Russia is not a saint uh, in an, under Catholic church because she belongs to a different church. And all these people below us, uh, they were considered to be um, martyrs and uh, saints in the Anglican church, which is different. I don't know if any or all of them belong to, uh, all were considered saints in Catholic church. I'm sure not all of them at least. Uh, so we have Martin Luther King, who is a, a Protestant uh, priest. So he's a Catholic, or he acknowledged as uh, an Anglican uh, martyr or saint. Um, as to whether his church belongs to Anglican church, it's possible. I cannot be sure, but uh, a very large part of uh, churches, Protestant churches in the United States belong to Anglican church. And we have a Salvadoran Archbishop Oscar Romero. He was assassinated. Uh, I think it's in Salvador. Yeah, I, I, I wrote Salvador here. Okay. Yeah, I went to the church where he was a bishop there. It's a very modern church. And he was uh, adored by the people, but uh, the government there was against it because he is for the poor people. Uh, that happened in 1980. And we have this next one. Uh, he was a church, uh, I think it's a Lutheran church. He was in, the, in Germany and he was against the Nazi regime. And there was an incident where uh, some of the high officials, including Field Marshal Rommel, Luo Mei or Jiang Junha, many of the high officials and generals got together and decided to kill Hitler. And this pastor was one of them uh, accused of uh, participating in this uh, action, huh, this project. And this is called the Valkyrie. Huh? Valkyrie is a word, uh, it's a title of a uh, Richard Wagner's opera, uh, Richard Wagner wrote a ring cycle, the four songs, uh, four operas of Richard Wagner. And uh, the, the second one is called the Valkyrie. Huh? And uh, this pastor and a group of very high officials, uh, they got together to try to kill Nazi hit, leader Hitler and uh, they failed. So they were, most of them were gathered around and executed. But to some of them, one of them I remember was a mathematician and he had the very good logic to argue in court so that he was exonerated. He was not executed. And this pastor apparently was executed. And this, ba -ba, that's where I learned from the movie. The movie is called The Valkyrie with Tom Cruise where he played this Taufenberg, huh? 
the person who took this bomb into the meeting where the meeting took place with, in Eagle's Nest where Hitler was presiding over this meeting. But someone saw this briefcase and moved it around and put it somewhere else. So when it exploded, Hitler was not killed. Okay, so these four people on this church facade uh, are saints considered by the Anglican church to, to be saints, but they were not Catholics. Okay, so we got this right off. Okay, then I come back very quickly to talk about canons in China. We have Si Shu and Wu Jing. Si Shu is Lun Yu Mengzi Da Xue Zhong Yong. Wu Jing is Shi Jing Shang Shu Li Ji Zhou Yi Chun Qiu. These nine books are considered Chinese canons. Huh? In the beginning, there were Liu Jing, and one of them is called Yue Jing. It seems that way before Han, Han Chao, Yue Jing was lost. Huh? Liu Jing Zhong the Yue Jing Hen Zhao Jiu Wang Yi. So some people may say six canons, but most people would say five because nobody has seen Yue Jing. Okay. However, in addition to these, the Chinese love to study it because that's all your tests imperial exam is all about. You go to the Keji Kaoshi, they only test you about your knowledge of the canon. Uh, later on, after several reform, there are a little bit different things added, but mainly you just have to study your canons. That's why we are science and uh, everything else like uh, technical or uh, ge geology or uh, astronomy, everything scientific was out of the Chinese exam and nobody, very few people would study those things. That's why uh, the Chinese entire civilization was under shackles by the canons, okay? That's why I say you should know something about all these Jing. Uh, this five canons later become 13 in Ming Dynasty, huh? they added a few other things. So they have the uh, Zhou Yi Shang Shu Shi Jing Zhou. In addition to the Wu Jing, they included the, the Chun Qiu San Zhuan and the San Li. Huh? These are one of the Jing before, now it becomes three. And they added the Xiao Jing Lun Yu Er Ya Meng Zi. Huh? Er Ya Shi Yi Zi Dian. Huh? And Xiao Jing, Ju Shu Shi. Uh, the grandson of Confucius, Zheng Shen Xie, huh? and uh, Meng Zi is uh, a disciple of uh, Confucius. So these 13 are considered Shi San Jing, and this concept came in Ming Chao. Huh? Before Ming Chao, there was only five. And as to Zhu, ne, Zhu Shi, when you have a text, you put annotation. Huh? Annotation. Uh, the Chinese are great with annotating their canons. Uh, many, many very worthy scholars spend all their lives writing annotation, uh, if not word by word, but uh, important things they want to say about the Jing, they, they would annotate. Okay. Uh, the total text of Shi San Jing. Uh, there are only 65, so it's 650,000 words. But the Shi San Jing Zhu Shu That's how much effort our great ancestor uh, scholars, they spend all their life on in addition to 13 canons, also their annotation, okay? So if anyone says, how come industrial revolution did not happen in China? That's because all the best of our people were studying the canons, okay? Uh, 
Oh boy, we're coming to the <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go over the rest uh, easily. Uh, perjury. Huh? This is a very important word which we Chinese speak very little of. Uh, to the Western people, they think to lie is very, very serious crime. It's a crime that is as big as the crime itself. If you did something wrong, that's a crime. But if you did not or did, whether you did it or not, if you lie about it, then you're as bad as that person who committed that crime. Uh, that's how much they put value on truth and lies and not on lies, okay? And uh, another thing they also put a lot uh, emphasis on is obstruction of justice. Uh, you can do something that's not right, uh, unjust or unfair, but you can also prevent people from finding out the truth about something. Uh, that's called the obstruction of justice. In the good old days when Nixon was impeached and removed from office, he resigned when he was proved to have committed perjury and obstruction of justice. He was not convicted of any crime regarding of these things. He did not, well, there was no definitive proof that he committed all these crimes, but he was proved to have perjured himself and he has obstructed justice to prevent people from knowing what he did. That's why he was impeached and uh, removed from the office. Finally, he resigned himself because he knew he would be removed. However, in the bed now present, we have this Donald Trump. He was proved to have committed all these crimes, including perjury and obstruction of justice, including actually committing the crime. And he was impeached and all his uh, psychophants Oh, I'm so psycho fence. Where am I? This is an important word during Trump's time, huh? If you are a person who just prays and follows and say anything, everything wonderful about this bad, corrupt leader, your boss, then you are a psycho fence. So not right now. Trump has done all these things and he was impeached and he admitted openly that all these things he did, but they still exonerated him. They did not remove him from the, the office and he is still here telling all kinds of lies that, and he still wants to be reelected. Okay, that's why I wanted to talk to you about this very seriously today. If you haven't voted, please vote. Uh, here we have oral and written. That's oral is huh? written is When you talk about history, there are oral histories and written histories. Huh? Written history, uh, you have to write it uh, after you invented the writing. Huh? You go mail writing words, you cannot write it. And some uh, folk stories, uh, folklore, folk, like uh, the some of the, oral, the stories. Then after many years, people started to write it down. It becomes written. Huh? Uh, take with a grain of salt. You don't put too much faith in that. You don't believe that uh, entirely because it may not be true. So you say, take with a grain of salt. Huh? Then we'll go forward to see uh, four common charts. There are histogram, bar chart, graph, pie chart, and line chart. Huh? This is a histogram, uh, which looks like a bar chart, but the bar chart uh, is more sophisticated. You could put different time uh, stacks or different colors and uh, uh, lots of information on a grouped bar chart. Huh? But this is a pie chart, which is a circle divided into uh, 
pie piece pieces, ha, huh? 就像我们吃披萨一样。So this is a chart about English speaking、uh, countries. Uh, USA has so many people that far more than all the other countries, and UK has the second largest、uh, population share of English speaking people. And after that, you have Canada. Canada, Australia, and some other minor countries all grouped together. And here is a line chart. This chart is about uh, uh, airlines.、Uh, you see on the right, American airline is the blue line.、Uh, the passenger carry、uh, the passengers in each year. This per certain. Uh, airline carried is put into one chart in a certain color, so you can tell this blue is American, Delta is orange, and so on, so forth. That's called a line chart. And here, this chart we probably have seen it is a COVID nineteen chart.、Uh, it has three parts. One part; it,、uh, these are all daily tests, and uh, uh, this is how many tests this was done. Huh. Okay, it came down so quickly, and up and down. And this in the background, you see this is a bar chart. That's in the. It's about the per percentage positive tests.、Uh, positive test, I think, is this part. Okay, I'm sorry, should not have moved it. This is how many tests performed, and those are the per. The people who, okay,、uh, I was wrong. Huh? This first line chart is the percentage of people who were tested positive, and this is the total amount of people who tested, and this are the death. Is that death? Maybe not.、Uh, daily positive, daily total. Okay, daily daily positive. Okay, nothing about death. Huh? This is a, a line about positive. Percentage.、Huh? This is a line about percentage of positive tests. In the beginning, only people who have symptoms would get a test. That's why the percentage of deaths is so huge, and now it's much less. But this is a total of tests performed, and this is positive test. Okay. So this is a combination of different. Charts.、Huh? Here we have the word helicopter. I put it here because last time I spelled it wrong. the The last second last letter should be e r, not o r. That's a helicopter.、Huh? And I had difficulty coming up with the word rotor.、Huh? The word rotor is this 螺旋桨的的这个螺旋桨呃、uh, It's different from a propeller, which is the 螺旋桨 On a propeller airplane, okay. Sometimes it's also on the uh, uh, boat motor. How we have a train, the mat, and you inboard, ah, inboard, and outboard. Two different. This board engine, inboard or outboard engine, on the this propeller, is called the propeller. But this helicopter propeller is called the rotor. And the、uh, helicopter is also called the chopper, copter, heli, or whirlbird. I talked about that before.、Uh, almost the last word, not quite. Huh? Here we have monk, which is、uh, about 一个清心寡欲又节俭的人 Huh? But it's usually in the beginning. It's only in the Christian church. Those monks, they could be. Very much into the world, or very much out of this world. So it, it could be a preacher that touches everybody, or a some、uh, hermit. He he would be secluded far away into the mountain. But they have one thing in common: they have little desire. They don't eat a lot. They don't have sexual pleasures, and they are very frugal. This kind of people are called monks. And in the beginning, it was only Christian monks, and in the beginning, it was only、uh, it was men and women. However, later the word nun came around to describe a female 
呃 monk， 所以就变成有 female 的这个 nun 这个字哈。呃、uh, ，however as time goes on。This word is applied not only to Christian monks. You could be a, a, a priest, a, a Buddhist monk, or an Islamic monk, or a philosopher, or or any other religion, because、uh, it's very common for a religion to require people to be. 清心寡欲节俭。So right now, when we talk about monk, most likely we thought about、um, a Buddhist monk or an Islamic、uh, Muslim.、Uh, uh, they they would、uh, be have a having a frugal lifestyle,、uh, as、uh, Christian churches、uh, put less and less emphasis on such kind of lifestyle. Uh, now I'm coming to astronomer and astronom astronomy. 哈，是天文学家。然后这个 audition 这个字呢，呃，现在几乎都是在说试镜哈，就是一个 movie company. In order to decide which actor or actress to hire, they would call、uh, groups of people in, group of actors in, to try out to take audition test to. Take a video and、uh, to interview. These are called audition. And this word is from the word audit. Ha,、huh? audit. We in school, say is attending. Ha, you did not choose this class. You did not take this course, but you were just there to attend the class to audit the class. So it is a student. However, audit has other meanings. Like uh, uh, if you are audited by IRS, that means the tax return. Is being checked by IRS to see if you tell the truth, and so many、uh, accountant would、uh, or、uh, agencies or companies or whatever they would send out auditors to check whether the books are correctly written.、Um, when we say books, is 说账簿的意思哈 So you can audit a company's、uh, books. That's the word used too. Uh, and uh, for example, when I was working and I was a lead worker, not a supervisor and not、uh, the basic、uh, people. So when we hire people, we I would be in charge of training a certain trainee, and everything this trainee does is being audited by me. She or he. Can not just go out and tell people, or to send out letters, or make decisions on a case without going through an auditor. Ha.、Huh? Uh, the the last thing is about this、uh, Gu Qin. Ha.、Huh? Uh, we read about this、uh, poem in which I say there were、uh, quite a lot of allusions or references. Ha.、Huh? Allusion is you mention something but not directly, and if you Directly mention something, then that's a reference.、Huh? Here we have、uh, this poem that we read last time. It has "shu sheng bao li qi." Ha, anything that I highlighted in red is a some kind of allusion or reference about another poem written before Li Bai. So he took all these terms and.、Uh, He knew that everyone who read this poem will know what he meant because these have different meanings. For example, "hui shou" means playing a gu qin, or "liu shui" means a bo ya tying a liu shui, and "zhong qi" "zhong zi qi" 听到了他就知道说哦，这个是 about 流水 So all these things are allusions or references to something not explicitly. Spelled out, <clears throat> and at the end of last class, I also mentioned Huang Tingjian. He is the foremost, the, the most diligent poet in Chinese history, who write、uh, poems with a lot and lot of dian gu. They say that each line must have two or three dian gu in his poem, so it's very difficult 
for other people to read. Uh, this person is called Huang Tingjian, or the Jiaozhe Huang Luzhi, is also a great calligrapher. And he is Jiangxi Shi Pai, the Zu Shi. He started this line. At that time, we have Tang Song Ba Da Jia, and we have Tan Yu, the Zhong Fan Gu, the Hui Zhao Gu Shi Ho, the Zuo Fa. That his this Shi Pai, then, is to write poetry, to write many, many poems. This is his Jiangxi Shi Pai. Okay. So these terms were related to his action. So these terms were related to his action. Okay, so uh, these terms were related to his action called the "dian tie cheng jin" or the "duo tai huan gu." So, 就是说他的诗呢，就随便抓一点别人的来，你就可以得到 all those information about this poem, which、uh, usually you cannot achieve. Okay, ah,、uh, so this is Gu Qin, and、uh, Qin is actually called Yao Qin. Ha, 以前。清朝以前的琴都是指瑶琴，而是不指其他的像筝啊什么其他的那些各种的琴，以前都不叫琴啊，只有瑶琴才叫的琴，所以那个叫做古琴哈、啊。古琴 was made of silk as a string and the tong mu 哈，呃，做它的那个 music resonation box resonation box I, I would guess that's the way word so so when you mention gu qin you say si tong which doesn't you don't see a word about qin but everybody knows you mean gu qin okay uh 至于桐木呢 it's too complicated to discuss today because the, there's no tongmu in this country so we have to go through some very terribly Uh, difficult words. Uh, so, if you want a, an example of si tong for qin, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of such poems that contains the word si, si tong. Huh? And this is a picture of zither, which is a German qin. Huh?、Uh, when I was on the river cruise, there was a, a small band. They played this, and they told us that when you play tales from the Vienna woods. By Johann Strauss the second, then you must have this musical instrument.、Uh, that is because it says, drang 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 drang. That's not violin or piano. It has to come from a zither, a German zither.、Oh. Let's just go to this one.、Uh, okay, I have to. Stop share. Okay.、Uh, stop share. And choose. I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. I hope you see this. Do you see that? Yes, we can see. Thank you. Oh boy. <laughs> But、uh, we couldn't hear very well. I'm not sure other students. Can anybody hear? No, cannot hear. Cannot hear. Oh, okay. No, cannot hear. No sound.、Uh, let me see. I have to. Hmm. Let me see. I want to share. We can hear your voice. Yeah, it's very good. You can hear my voice. Oh. But not the video. You 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 need to 点点那个上那个头像 Really? Uh, let me see. I'm here. I'm, oh boy, not this one. I'm here. Uh, share screen. See, it's not muted. Share screen. And then. Well, if it doesn't work. I will have to. Do you mind to see the uh the left corner? They have the speaker. You can see the left corner. Yeah, but this speaker. No, that's still can hear. Left side, left side. Well, I cannot do it because uh, uh I checked that and can you check your volume, and when you move to a video. Uh, when you move to a YouTube video, 
you try to move, move your mouse uh, index to uh, YouTube video. Just move your a little bit down mouse. Really? Can you move? Can you move your mouse? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, good. yes, can you I can. Yes. Uh, yeah, they... Left. Okay. Can you? Yeah, turn, yeah, yeah. Turn up the. Turn... Yeah, tap. Yeah, you did it. Okay. So do you do you click the share computer sound when you share the? So you can you still cannot hear, huh? Oh, do you do you click? <sighs> you need to check the computer sound. Oh, uh, Joe, do you check? Yes. Do you check the share computer sound when you sharing? I think I did, but right now I can only see I'm not muted. Well, I am running out of time. You just go home because I already gave you this link so you can listen to this. And I'm sure just about everybody know this song. I'm going to go over this quickly. I will stop share this first. And I will try to share the other one. Go back to this one, okay. Uh, can you hear me still? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's just pretend that we play this. You can go home and <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. And no this, uh, I don't even have to read this because it's very simple and there's uh -huh. nothing that's yeah, very I difficult. It. But it's a very cute sound and it's so delightful. Yeah. I like this song very much. And there, there are three parts. First is when she was a little girl and was wondering about the world and her mother told her whatever will be, will be. And the second part is uh, uh, when I was young, I fell in love and I asked my sweetheart and the sweetheart told, him, told her whatever will be, will be. So you just have to trust fate. Huh? Now she told the same thing to her children. Uh, in this movie, it, it's very good because in this movie, he, she and her husband has this young boy about 10 years old. So just the right age to be told about such things. Uh, and Doris Day is, was a very, very popular actress uh, during our time. Huh? It, this is not our time right now. <laughs> She's an actress singer and an animal welfare activist. Uh, she's very good to animals and she spent a lot of time doing animal activism. And she and one of her husband uh, owned a hotel chain. Uh, they cater to people with animals. Uh, some was in uh, California. I think now it's no longer in existence. Huh? This movie is called A Man Who Knew Too Much. Huh? 就是说有一个人他知道太多了，所以他就被人家暗杀，一路跑到哪里都被人家 people wanted the bad guys, the villains wanted to assassinate him, and uh, the problem is uh, the villains were trying to kill a high-ranking politician in a, a place where where they're going to kill this politician. And uh, Doris Day played this woman who is performing on stage and singing this song. So she was extremely nervous thinking all these bad guys are all around. And finally they did shoot somebody but did not kill that politician. And that politician came down and thanked her. And, but that's not the end of the story because they kidnapped her son. Okay, and she sang two songs in that movie, and she was a, one of the biggest uh, movie stars in the 50s and 60s, and she was in movies of all many genres. Huh? When we saw the movie, The Man Who Knew Too Much, people were laughing. They, they say, how could you hire a singer to be an actress? She knew nothing about acting, but... Uh, Hitchcock was uh, very smart and uh, it proved he was right. She was an excellent actor, actress, and she be became a leading actress in many, many movies, in musicals, comedies, dramas, and the thrillers. And that movie would be considered a thriller. And she was usually in the comedy because she has such a, a glowing uh, personality, we would say saccharine, just a little. 
saccharin. I don't know how to spell it. Probably like this. Ha, 以前的甲糖只有 saccharin， 后来就有各种的甲糖哈，就有什么 ？I don't know what the fake sugar you use right now. There are many. Sweet kinds and low. Of, yeah, sweet and low. Yeah, that's one. <laughs> Splenda. Yeah, Splenda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are many. Oh, yeah. In the old time, there was only saccharin, so we use that word uh, to to mean people who are just bubbly all the time, but not really uh, very honestly or from their heart. Huh? Uh, but she, the most famous movies, those of Popular would be a series of movies she made with Rock Hudson.、Uh, the first one being Pillow Talk. 我们中文叫做枕边细语哈。They made many, not sequels, but similar movies、uh, in the same vein. And Rock Hudson, of course, now we know was a gay person who died of AIDS. But at that time, he was just one of the very handsome young men. And、uh, for Pillow Talk, Doris Day was、uh, nominated for an Oscar. And this guy, I guess most people knew, Alfred Alfred Hitchcock. He was an English、uh, director who later came to United States, came to Hollywood.、Uh, in the beginning, he remade many of his English movies for the American audience. Then he stayed in America. And made more and more movies, and he was one of the most famous director with a good、uh, box office result. 哈，他的卖座非常非常的好哈。那当然，他也除了做 director， 呃、uh, ，he also was、uh, producing movies and、uh, write screen screen scripts. Okay, he was、uh, just phenomenal. 哈。He's the most studied, extensively studied filmmaker in history, and he's called a master of suspense. 就是他可以让观众都被他哦、oh, take into the wrong places and so on and so forth, make people very very nervous. So he's called master of suspense, and the movies he made, all his movies were. Nominated for a total of forty-six Oscar nominations, and six of them won. Huh? That's a very uh, great uh, director. However, when he was alive, alive, people think he was、uh, just playing gimmick to to attract people. He was not a serious. Uh, uh, academically speaking, he was not a. Re really respectable director. He was a commercial director, but after he died, his、uh, reputation keeps growing.、Huh? And this is a、uh, Royal Albert Hall. 呃，就是在英国伦敦哈 ，in London. This is a big、uh, venue. 哈，我们叫做 venue 的意思就是呃表演的场所哈，我们叫做 venue. Uh, in most big cities, you have the stadium, which can hold a lot of people, and、uh, you have the opera house or theater or whatever. They could do things like this, as it's Royal Albert Hall, but they were all very small compared to Albert Hall. Albert Royal Albert Hall is huge,、uh, so there are big events taking place there. And、uh, when I saw some recently, they have、uh, people in the center of the hall instead of a stage at the end. Of course, they have stage where they can perform and people could watch. But this is like Madison Square Garden in New York City.、Uh, you could、uh, Madison Square Garden could hold a basketball. Game, but it can also hold、uh, concerts, uh, especially especially rock music concert, and this is something like that.、Uh, but you can have a stage in the middle of this hall, and、uh, tens of thousands of people in the audience would be surrounding it. It's、uh, so、one of the places you could pass by when you go to London.、Uh, you may not be able to. Go in. There are other programs, but this is right north of the museum district, and right south of Hyde Park and the Kensington Gardens. 
So you have to go to Hyde Park and Kensington Garden, and you probably have to go to El, uh, Victoria and Albert Museum, Simons Museum, Natural History Museum, and so on. And this Albert Hall is sitting right in the middle of this area. Okay, now we're going to talk about this poem by Tu Du Fu. Huh? I cheated by giving you only four lines of this poem. It's called Ke Tan. Huh? And this four line is beautiful, well written, and related to our topic. But the rest of it is very long and difficult and uninteresting, and it's just impossible to memorize. So you just remember the first four lines. That's good enough. Huh? This four line says, 天上浮云如白衣,思绪改变如苍狗,古往今来共一时,人生万事无不有. Huh? This matches that uh, Doris Day song very well. So I picked it immediately when I saw it. 他说天上的浮云 is like white clothes, uh, when, when Chinese say clothes, it's like a suit or a, a pants or something. It's a big robe, uh, okay? Chinese, even men wear a long robe. That's why it's a white cloth, but it's a long robe. Huh? But in, a, in an instant, it can be changed to a tango. Huh? Oh, the sky, the, the clouds moved. And it changed, you see, oh, that looks like a dog. Oh, that looks like something else. But that just shows you that uh, everything can change so fast and you have no control of it. Huh? And when this um, poet who is Du uh, Fu, he wrote this because there, he, there was a fellow poet who was very poor, but a very good and ups, upstanding person. But his wife could not suffer poverty with him. His wife left him because he was too poor. So many people were gossiping about this matter and thought Wang Ji was a bad person. So Du Fu wrote this poem to say that such a wonderful person, uh, he was a, uh, uh, misunderstood by all these uh, others because uh, of gossip. That's what he, that's why he wanted to write this. Huh? My main purpose today was to talk about electoral college, but there's no time. So we're, we're maybe we'll talk about it to next week after the election. By that time, we probably already know who is the president, but according to many people, we probably would not know on election night because of the complication of a vote ballot, uh, polling, the, the, the ballot, uh, uh, how do you sort of say that? <laughs> yeah, so so that that's a problem about electoral. That, that could be a homework for you to study why it is so difficult for America to choose some someone for president that they all agree to because their system skewed the system. The system was skewed so that your vote does not count as a vote. Huh? Most other countries, you have a system of popular vote. You just vote and you know exactly who is your next president on that evening. But in America, it's not so sure. They have to go through the process and why we had this process and why, what the process is like. Uh, all these things should have been thrown out of the window long ago. And they plan to do that many times, but they never succeeded in throwing out the electoral college system. Okay, the, does anybody know about this system? that the system is not a popular vote. You have to vote yeah. for somebody who then go to vote. And in the process, a lot of the votes will be lost because in each state, when you, when the one person wins more than 50%, then all these people who vote for on your behalf would have to vote for that person instead of voting what you prefer. 
So that is a, a very strange system. That no, was the, this okay. is the. I don't think it's very uh, strange system. It's because the history background. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, yeah, we're talking about next time after the election. Okay, I, yeah. I, I like this topic too. Yeah, I think it's very timely, but uh, uh -huh. we run out of time. In so that's it. What, did uh, anyone have anything to say? Just uh, you mentioned about martyr that that the uh, original that's Christian and then Zhongguo use the release. But yeah. isn't it recently in the news a lot this uh, suicide bomb bomber, the Islamic, the, the radicals? Yes. Are yes. they uh, also considered martyr? Yes. Modern? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah. apparently in China or in the Muslim countries, this word was not used so often in the past. Yeah. But since the 20th century came along, it's used mm. much more often. Mm. Okay. I think there could be more Islamic martyrs before, but uh, in China, uh, I don't know. Do, do we have a history of assassination? Yes, yes, we had the eight Jinke. Jinke is like a martyr. But I, yeah. Okay. But do, I don't think anybody called him a, a Lie Shi. Could it be? Maybe somebody did. Yeah, but it's very yeah. often yeah. right now. Lots of people were called Lie Shi. Yeah. Sure. Person, is, sorry. Yes. Go on. No, no. I, I have last question. So after you finish, can I ask the last question? Yes, I'm finished. You finished? Okay. Can yes. you go back the uh the picture on uh forty six? Oh, 46, uh -huh. uh, Albert Hall, The yes. Albert, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you say a ban, oh, it's venue. Oh, okay, thank you, B-E-N-U-E. -E. You know, when I see the Halloween uh, movie and they say, we are in the venue, we are in the venue. Oh, so it, that, that means that they are in the Halloween, what, what Halloween are you talking about? I'm talking about the Halloween movie. In the movie, movie, they have song, and the people say we are in the venue. We are in the venue. Oh, so oh, it's the meaning is that they are performing. Okay, I got the answer. Yeah, okay. Uh huh. E E N U E. Okay, thank you. Yeah, since you're talking about Albert, you know who Albert is. I mentioned there is a nearby uh, museum called the VNA. The, the uh, museum it's Victoria and Venue. Albert. Venue. Uh, oh. Venue. Queen Venue. Victoria was uh, someone in Germany. She was not English, but mm -hmm. when uh, the in England or UK the, the king died and there was no heir, they went to Germany and found this royal person, Queen Victoria right be before she turned 18. They grabbed her and put her on the throne and she became Queen Victoria. So later uh, she was on the throne for a long, long time. And mm -hmm. she was uh, just a few days before she was 18. She was able to come here, come there, to go there and become the queen. So uh, she had a terrible relationship with her mother. So when she wanted to marry, uh, she wants to pick someone that she likes instead of her mother liked or any other people liked. So he, she picked uh, Prince Albert, who was also German, so they could speak German. So it's a, a, a German royalty like she was. And she and the Prince Albert, huh? she, he, he became Prince Albert. And they were so great together. They had uh, probably 18 children or something, like many, many, many children. But uh, he died uh, relatively young because she went on to live several decades after that. So she was heartbroken. So she wanted to remember her husband everywhere she turns. So this Royal Albert Hall is in memory of Prince Albert. And right across the street in Kensington Garden, there is a 
Prince Albert Memorial. It's a huge statue, beautifully done, tall, right there in Kensington Garden. So this, and uh, they had this biggest uh, museum in London. It's called the VMA, Victoria and the Albert Museum. So these are all the things uh, Queen Victoria uh, put, down, put out to, to memorize her husband. However, she did live several decades beyond mm -hmm. the death of her husband. So people have rumors about her affairs. Uh, for example, there was one person who is uh, taking care of her horse. It's called Mr. Brown. So there is a movie called the Mrs. Brown with Queen Victoria played by Judy Dench. And mm -hmm. uh, there, were, there was a recently, uh, even later than Miss, Mrs. Brown, there was a movie, I forgot what uh, name it was. It's called uh, The Queen and uh, something uh, about this man's name who is Indian. He, uh, he was a, a guard in English army in India and he was sent to be a servant. And in this movie, they talk about how they were romantically involved or whatever. Uh, there are quite a few such things, but when when her f husband died immediately afterwards, she was plunged in depression. She was wearing black things all through for years and years and came out into the regular life only many years later. That's Prince Albert, yeah. Okay. As I mentioned, there are so many historical movies that I can teach, but I cannot, uh, I, I have to, take it with a grain of salt because yes. they're not always true <laughs> that's right they may for entertainment yes yeah. <laughs> yeah uh could you just quickly i'm sorry but i think i missed that when you mentioned c e a d b c i got a d and b c but i am not quite clear that on c e and b c e oh c e is common era there are okay common era Got it. Yeah, okay. many oh, yeah. people in the world who were not Christians, so they hated to use a thing that mentions Christ all the uh, time. So I eventually, see. to be collect politically correct, they changed uh -huh. it to CE, which means okay. common era, and the BC into it's before. Yeah. So right now, all the academic papers they try to use B. B uh, CE and the BCE instead of AD, just to be non religious. Ah, okay. Oh. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Should I say bye bye? Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I hope to talk about the uh, Electoral College next time. <laughs> okay. You might have Okay. Jo, I already dropped my ballot. Okay. Yeah, me too. I, I dropped my ballot. And do you know how to check whether they received it? You can go to, I forgot what it's called, my vote. Oh, really? <laughs> my vote. Uh -huh. That's good. Oh, you, say, you also can call them. Right. They have oh, I don't want to bother yeah, him, but Yeah, uh -huh. uh, I could not see how, how they process it, but it just says, uh, <laughs> the date that they received it so at least it's not missing oh okay yeah, yeah you can think they can process right now yeah i guess they have to wait until the day yeah the, the, law says, the last yeah yeah that's right but uh, yeah. if you google for uh, checking my vote or something they there is a website in washington state where you can go to to check your vote okay and also right, on the app if you, you. Write, um, the mail mailing address, if they find out there's something wrong, they can mail the notice later to you. Uh, I could not hear it very well, but if they there if there's something wrong with their signature, and if you put your phone number or email address, they will call you to tell you that the, the signature did not match or there's anything else that is wrong, and you can do something about it. Yeah, you can write your address on the envelope. You know the envelope? <laughs> yes, I know it's a shuhua, but I really can't hear very clearly. It's very faint. 
All right, oh. we talk next week. Oh, okay. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I can Love hear you now. Uh, you. Here's a word you. for you before you yeah, sign yeah. off. I, it's really called the faint. Huh? This sound, if it's very faint, it's called faint. Okay. Is uh, that the faint? Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Okay.